Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. All right, so let's talk about elections. Democrats continue on and on with the big lie, the big lie. But the more we learn, the more information we have access to, the more we realize that in fact, the big lie is really the big lie. Democrats want to talk about democracy, but Democrats, as we know and as we are learning more and more, seem to be taking notes directly out of the Vladimir Putin playbook on how to win elections, and they have developed what may be a foolproof strategy, even admitted it a short while after Biden's inauguration. Of course, we'll do a flashback to that, and I'll show you what I mean by that a little bit later in the video, but what we need to focus on is the compiling evidence that the system is not fair, as Democrats claim it is, that it isn't a big lie or extremism to be discontent with the way that things are currently going. Another massive bombshell, this time out of Arizona. Guess Guess what? Katie Hobbs is now implicated in the Twitter files. We now have irrefutable proof that Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs had connections at Twitter, in fact had a direct line to executives at Twitter to silence her critics. Does that seem appropriate for a high-profile Democrat running for public office to have a direct in with executives at the biggest online platform for speech and especially political speech to have a direct in to be able to silence her critics and silence narratives that don't benefit her? It's not a fair game, folks. The Democrats seem to be the kings and queens of propagandas and shady tactics, and the proof continues to pile up. Let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. We've got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this from the Gateway Pundit. Proof, crooked Secretary of State Katie Hobbs had Twitter silence her critics in Arizona prior to gubernatorial run. Data from MO versus Biden. Now we know why crooked Katie Hobbs didn't want to debate Carrie Lake. Why would she when she ran the election, oversaw 30% of election day precinct machines breaking down, and had the media in her pocket and was working with social media platforms to silence her critics? This is likely criminal activity, especially if she silenced her critics during her gubernatorial run, which is likely, via Trump attorney Christina Bob. Unreal. Katie Hobbs' office contacts Twitter to have posts removed. So the Democrat candidate who ran the Arizona election censored her political opponents, disrupted election day votes, and then threatened counties with prosecution if they didn't declare her the winner. Take a look at this document right over here showing correspondence between Katie Hobbs' team and top officials at Twitter. On Thursday, January 7th, 2021, Misinformation Reports, Redacted Communications Director Office, Hello, I'm Redacted Individual, Communications Director for the Office of the Arizona Secretary of State. I am flagging this Twitter account for your review. Dear Twitter, please see this report below from the Arizona Secretary of State Office. Please let me know if you have any questions. I am not sure the best contact email to send this to at Twitter. Thanks. Twitter then responds, thank you, redacted individual, we will escalate. Then another reply, thank you, both tweets have been removed from the service, thank you. The whole thing is one massive conspiracy and it's all connected. This massive widespread effort by all of these social media platforms working in unison all at the same time, not just to ban certain individuals, not to ban the president of the United States, but to censor speech surrounding particular topics. It seems as though it wasn't necessarily the social media companies who are taking action on themselves, but rather politicians, the Democrat establishment, the FBI, were behind the whole damn thing. You know, the Gateway Pundit asked a great question. Why would Katie Hobbs feel the need to have to debate Carrie Lake, given all the power that she wields? She has the power of the media in her pocket, willing to defend her, willing to call her opponent an extremist threat to democracy, suppress her gaffes and suppress her scandals. She's running her own election. And on top of that, she has the ability to actually censor speech, political speech, relevant to the state of Arizona during election times. Now, so far, the only example that we have is from January 7th, 2021. But who knows, maybe there's some correspondence between the Arizona Secretary of State Office and the Twitter Censorship Division after Katie Hobbs officially declared her run as a gubernatorial candidate ahead of 2022. But honestly, even if that never surfaces, 
This alone, by itself, is so highly unethical, and it shows how things were swinging in only one direction. The counter-leftist talking point, or the anti-Trump talking point right now, is that the Trump administration also had channels directly to Twitter executives to remove posts. Well, where's the evidence of that? Where's the macro evidence that it was being enforced on a wide scale? There is nothing to suggest that this is a both sides issue. This is Democrat candidates, Democrat politicians, censoring unfavorable information, post-election, and pre-election. And if that's the case, then it really starts to paint the picture you start to see exactly what I was talking about when I mentioned earlier how the Democrats have crafted this foolproof plan. There's a reason they could run someone like Joe Biden, a man with a melting brain, and still see electoral success. There's a reason they can run someone like John Fetterman and see electoral success. There's a reason they can run someone like Katie Hobbs, as unlikable as Katie Hobbs, and see success because they have control over the whole machine, the shadow machine. And this brings us to what I was talking about earlier, where the Democrats essentially admitted it. This 2020 piece from Time Magazine, the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. We all remember this little snippet from that article. We covered this basically two years ago. That's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told. Even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream, a well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes to influence perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage, coverage and control the flow of information. That is what the Democrats are doing. And you're not going to tell me that that sounds like the description of a free and fair democracy. That is what you see in authoritarian dictator state elections. A secret, shadow, well-funded cabal of powerful people working together to influence perceptions, change the rules, change laws, and steer media coverage. That is the perfect description of what people are so frustrated over. And yet the media will tell you that that's a big lie, while simultaneously literally telling you it's actually not a lie, it's actually the shadow secret that, quote, saved the 2020 election. I never want to hear the word democracy, um, a democracy, ever come out of a Democrat's mouth ever again. You see what's going on. This massive machine, frankly, it's a well-oiled machine, I mean, you gotta give it to them. Post-2016, they got real serious, working together to ensure that Donald Trump can never win again, and they've created an anti-democracy democracy monster. And hopefully the whole thing is unraveling. Hopefully the Twitter files, this newly found transparency, this window into the corruption and how deep it goes and how it involves individuals, Democrats running for public office, the DNC, the FBI, the quote Biden team, in other words, the Brandon regime. Hopefully this whole thing is being exposed and hopefully, frankly, people start to give a crap. That's probably going to be the hardest one. The media is obviously not going to shed light on any of this because, I mean, they're basically part of the shadow system. And so it's going to be tough. How do you make people aware of what's going on? How do you make people aware of the magnitude and the details behind this massive widespread conspiracy to take control over American politics and culture? But I guess in conclusion, the big lie is the big lie. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you feel like joining us here at the Liberal Hive Mind. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.